Hello everyone, so today we're at a Land Rover, it's a Freelander 2, 2007, and it's got the TD4 engine in it, I'm sure the size is 2.2. So, the time I got here, there was only one code in it, so it says glow plug code, so the, the problem with the thing was, it was a crank no start, and when it was recovered, it went on the trailer, it eventually started. So we went under the engine bay, just, this will be a word they want to yourself and me, oh who's that? So what it, what it was, there's, there's the fuel filter there, so we decided to pull the intake, the fuel intake from the pump up to this filter to see if there was fuel coming out, and indeed there wasn't any fuel. So we then decided to use a little electric pump and put it right in, into that position there, and the car started, eventually, but the filter had been changed. So what I then decided to do was we went back to this pump, it's, oh wait now, I'll get my torch. We went back to this pump, which is in the tank. So when it was cranking over uh, on these middle pins, let me see, these thicker, See these thicker wires in there? There's 12 volts in the ground, so these thin wires are just to do with the, the fuel sender unit, but the two thick ones in the middle, one's, I think it was that one, is it brown, yellow was the power, and the black something was the ground. So I fed that and I could hear the pump run, but when I went up to the front, there wasn't any fuel coming out. So at that point, I was ready to condemn the pump because I measured over that wire with my amps clamp, I was getting five amps, I said, that's a good pump that should be shooting it up the front to the filter, and here it wasn't. So just as I was going to do that, my friend decided to phone a 4x4 specialist, and a good job would never change this pump because it's £300. This seemingly is only a transfer pump, because the, the tank is in two halves, so that pump takes it and puts it to the other half, and it's a high pressure pump, it draws it up. So, we've still not got to the bottom of this car why it's intermittent start stall. Well, it has to be something to do with fuel fuel or fuel pressure at the end of the day but just a warning to you before you can take a pump make sure it's not just an internal transfer pump because that's what that was one was doing because i was feeding it 12 volts the guy was up at the front of the filter and there was nothing coming out but as soon as we drew it up with a little hand pump it came flying out but so a word of warning that is a transfer pump between the two compartments of the tank cheers so we're back at the freelander and this was a car that was cutting out and wouldn't restart sometimes then it eventually started so after a long drive and everything like that we're getting some codes coming up so you can see there that the, the heater and glow plug see the heater and glow plug one's still there but we're getting diesel intake air from floor control open circuit and if you press that oh it was loading up sorry about that <laughs> yes where to go anyway it was complaining about deviation and stuck open, stuck shut, you know, that you name it. So, I read up, and seemingly this is a very common fault with them. And if you look down there, that five pin wire plug at the front there, seemingly that is common to get, it sticks, and it can either stick, stuck, get stuck open, which is bad because you need it to close in order for the EGR to do a regen, I take it, well, I think this car's still got a DPF on it, in fact it has, I've seen pids for it and you need it to shut also for when the car goes to stop for a, it's called anti-shudder so that's the thing down there seemingly well it was an old forum i read it's a hundred odd quid plus vat so i'd imagine it'd be about 150 or 60 pound but they're on the shelf so that tells a story that they keep them in stock so it must be a common fault to go right there so you can see it's got the, the starts with a brown wire so we're going to replace that and see if that cures its starting problem because if that valve st stuck shut the thing will never start so that's on a 2.2 diesel another thing you've got to do this when you change the fuel filter you must prime this up because as we found out the pump does not come direct to here it's just a transfer pump between the saddle tank they call it so you must just use a little primer and bring it up into there so we're going to replace this, and I believe it needs calibrated, so I'll need to see if the snap-on machine does that. Because uh, I once done an EGR valve on a Freelander, and you had to calibrate that in as well, so... 
There we go, so that's the throttle intake. Right, I'll get you the codes again. So, there's the codes there. Diesel intake, air control. It's that one it kept coming up. A P02E9-00. So that's the one it came at first. Oh, and so did the performance one. A P02E1. And the rest of the codes were generated because I disconnect, disconnected it just to make sure that uh, that was the right thing I was attacking. So we're going to replace that. Cheers. So we managed to extract it. It was three T30 Torx from the top. And there's a couple of... There's a sensor on the side. There's a one, two, three, five pin connector. And there's another. That's a rear temperature sensor. It's in there. And there was another sensor. Definitely was another sensor somewhere. Must be down there. Anyway, so we, when I took it out, we tried to rotate this, and a good job I done it because, oh, there you go, it sticks. So there it's done it again, but we worked away at it, then started moving again, so I'm just assuming that's sticking shut as well. There you go, it's... I think that's a proof of concept, so if I can do it one way, I think what's happening, it's getting stuck when it's coming back and no one allowing any air to get in, so... It's like the gears, it must be plastic gears or whatever. But just, just two seconds ago it was working. So when you do replace it, you have to tell the car that's got a replacement throttle body. So I've always found the snap-on tools quite good in these. So I'll show you this one here. So you're going to, there you go. It'll be function test under Freelander 2.2. Throttle valve, throttle valve actuator replacement. So you have to tell the car that you've replaced it. Or else you'll be getting fault codes till kingdom come. So there you go. So once it's in, I'll probably show you. If no, maybe maybe we'll be a wee up the road for my tea. Anyway, so there's the new one. It's a there's a number there. Pierberg. Actually, <laughs> the old one I was removing, I was moving that the wrong way. So there's one way it goes right down, another way it doesn't. In fact, here it's here. Don't make the same mistake as I did. So it goes down like that way, but the other way it doesn't go. So anyway, it's complaining about it, the computer's complaining about it, and they're notorious to go, so we're just going to replace it anyway. So that's the throttle actually had been changed, and you can see there, we're monitoring the pits, command throttle position and absolute throttle position. So, you see that's a good mirror image of each other? If you have... Bit that radio of you! <laughs> so, we call that a fix... An enchanted evening! We'll call that a fix, I'll go back into my codes and show you... Codes... On my snap on too. That's it with George's snap on tool. So you can see it's just the heater plug that's came back. The other one has disappeared, so we'll call that a fix. I must say, snap one's pretty good on Land Rover, Range Rover. In fact, I quite like this wee machine. Hey, George. Ah, so I see. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Cheers.